Hi, I'm Ed Pozzuoli, president of Trip Scott Law Firm in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Today, we continue the series of webcasts sponsored by Trip Scott to bring you the pertinent issues of the day. Today, we are joined by Representative Ellen Bogdanoff. Ellen was first elected in January 2004 and then again in 2006 to the State House. Ellen is known for always being well prepared and above partisan politics. So today, we welcome Ellen Bogdanoff. Ellen? Thank you. Ellen, as our only Broward County resident in the state, the House or the Senate for that matter, uh, what, were, what were some of the issues in this last legislative session that our viewers in Broward would think important? Well, um, every legislative session there are certain issues that kind of take the forefront. Uh, in this particular legislative session, um, we always say that there were three. It was the budget, the budget, and the budget. The, uh, the budget uh, for the state of Florida, uh, obviously, as most people know, there's been a downturn in the economy, and we basically had to spend a fair amount of our time in the legislative uh, session, including the beginning of session, actually cutting about $6 billion out of our budget. And how big is the Florida budget now? Well, the budget, um, if you go back into perspective, when I was elected in 2004, the budget was at $54 billion. Over the last few years, it escalated to $72 billion, which was a huge increase. Uh, what we ultimately had to do was cut it back to about $66 billion, which is probably where we should have been uh, from the beginning if we had had natural growth. So how, does, uh, the, how did the legislature approach uh, cutting the budget or cutting the revenue sources from the six billion by six billion dollars this time. Well, I think we we had a philosophy that number one we weren't going to raise taxes. Uh, There's tough economic times, and this was not the time to ask people to spend more money out of their pocket and give it to government. So that was the that was the first premise that we dealt with. The second one, we have to pick our priorities. And for the Florida House, we decided that education, health care, and safety and security were going to be our top priorities. And we ended up funding those. And I, you know, based on you know what we had to deal with and, and the pain uh, that most people thought they were going to feel, I think we did a pretty good job in making sure that we balanced. The budget, which we have to do constitutionally, as well as not necessarily uh, injure those that need the help from government the most. Now, you mentioned some other priorities, education, health care. How did those factor into the budget debate? Well, I think that what we had is, you know, our debate between the Senate and the House was, you know, whether or not, you know, we continue to fund infrastructure or we take care of education. I think most people feel that education needs to be funded. Uh, we cut education by less than 2%, uh, which was a huge task considering that we had to cut $6 billion out of the budget. And education is by far one of our lar largest budget items. Uh, the second thing that we had to do was make sure that our most vulnerable, you know, our foster care system, our emergency room, our mer emergency room stay open. So we had to make sure that health care was taken care of. Our Medicaid. Right. Uh, Medicaid is growing at an astronomical rate in the state of Florida, as well as safety and security. People want to make sure that we don't have to let prisoners out early because of, you know, we're running out of room and we don't have money to build prisons or to keep them there. And we made sure that we did not do that. And so we took those as our priority. And those were the debates that we were having uh, in the legislative session. And so the result of the legislative session is you didn't raise taxes, but you were able to protect education protect safety and security, uh, and fund uh, ap appropriate health care and some safety net items. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Let's turn our attention to what the future might bring. Uh, a lot of people are concerned about the forecast. Uh, how do you forecast the next legislative session? Well, I think the budget's still going to be a key issue uh, with respect uh, to what we're going to be doing in the next legislative session. I think people are anticipating that we're not going to necessarily have the severe downturn. It's not going to be cut by $6 billion again, but we are going to see probably a slight downturn uh, in, in the budget again. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more challenging because we basically cut every piece of fat we could find um, out of state government um, and then some. And you want to make sure that you retain your essential services, that you don't compromise education, you don't compromise your health care system, or Medicare or, you know, Medicaid, you're not compromising, you know, the safety and security of the citizens because those are the key, you know, reasons that government needs to be there. Um, you know, we need to stay out of the way of business. We need to reduce our regulation, um, and hopefully we can stimulate the economy. So a lot of what we did in the past legislative delegation, um, in the last le legislative session, was to make sure that we did things to stimulate business in the state of Florida so that we could reinvigorate the economy. And hopefully it will start to have some of that effect. You know, after the November elections, people have a tendency to kind of bounce back. Our holidays are coming up, and, and hopefully, you know, uh, God willing, we are hurricane-free this uh, season. Um, we will go into a much more, you know, productive year. So the, fo the forecast for next legislative session is that we're prepared uh, to protect the basic uh, core uh, role of government in providing education, health care, safety and security, um, uh, but we're hopeful 
that the economy will uh, will pick up and where we can we can get back on track. Absolutely, and um, hopefully we did enough, or we started the ball rolling in the last session to make that happen. I mean, we did cut property taxes, maybe not by as much as people wanted, but certainly what we did is we reduced them, and they are not going up. Uh, we created portability, so there is some movement in the real estate market. Well, thank you for that, by the way. Well, you're welcome, and uh, hopefully we can do more, uh, because we know that uh, people want to pay less taxes. I mean, there's I, I've not really had anybody call me and say, hey, increase my taxes, would you? Um, so... Uh, I think government from every every level, you know, the federal, the state, uh, and the local levels have to figure out how to reduce and do with a little bit less. It's it's important to the people, um, and I think we can do it, and we can do it responsibly. Well, with that, Ellen, I want to thank you for your time today. We appreciate uh, the work that you do in the legislature and all your community involvement. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having me.